Martin, it's like an AI agent. You can call Martin over the phone. You can have Martin call your friends and talk to them over the phone. What was the process like getting into Yale? I went to sort of like a competitive school, so we all like worked pretty hard. Why did you decide to drop out? I was pretty bored of my classes by the end, and I really wanted to do something bigger and do it full time. Do you believe in a decade from now, we'll be completely hands-free? The movie Her, in that movie, like everyone's only using audio. What's an advice you would give to 20-year-old founder? You need to build your confidence and your faith. For me, the best way to build it was Today on the show, we have Dawson Chen. His company is called Tri Martin, but if you've seen Iron Man and you, you might have seen Jarvis in that movie, he's building the real life version of that in reality. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. Dawson, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, yeah. Thanks for having me. Can you give a little intro about you, what you were doing before, how old are you, and what are you working on now? I'm Dawson, I'm 20, and before starting Martin, I was a student at Yale. Last summer, I dropped out to start Martin with some friends, and since then, for the past Last year, we've been just doing a lot of product work and trying to make it basically a better Siri with a large language model and deeper integrations. It's a lot of product work and uh, we recently did some launches uh, that we're really happy about and we want to share it with as many people as we can now. Martin, in simple words, it's like an AI agent where you can talk to it. If I tell it to send an email to someone or send a text to someone, it'll actually do it. A lot of the time we try it with Siri, but it doesn't do it. The problem with Siri is it's very shallowly integrated with a bunch of Apple products. What we want to do is integrate with all of your productivity apps and do really deep integrations. So for example, when we integrate with phone, like your phone calling, you can call Martin over the phone. You can have Martin call your friends and talk to them over the phone. And you can have him call strangers and, and, and ask them questions or like book a reservation, stuff like that. So for each integration we do, we try to make it really deep. For calendar, we make it so that you can view, add, edit, and delete events just with like voice commands. You can also text Martin to delete or add events. And you can have Martin text your contacts and schedule full events with them. So every integration we do is super deep and we also aren't limited to one platform. So we have like Apple Calendar and Google Calendar and we have like Gmail and Outlook coming up and you can not only text Martin, you can also speak to him in our interface, you can call him and you can WhatsApp him and you can email him. So we try to be really well integrated and that's sort of our specialty. That's really amazing. Uh, how did you come up with the name Martin? Martin is like the name of my robotics mentor in high school and we sort of really liked his voice. So the Martin voice is somewhat based on his voice. Okay, before Martin, like what were you doing? Is this your first ever software product or you built something else before? I grew up hacking together a bunch of websites and apps. In middle school and high school with just my friends, we built a bunch of software for our school, like a bell schedule that you could like track your classes on. And then in college, I built a lot of side projects. So one was called Campus Guide. It was basically like Airbnb for college tours. So you could like book a tour with a college student and they would meet you on campus and then give you a full tour for like $45 an hour. I also launched this like social app called Flick. You would get assigned a new friend within your a mile of your location every morning. And then you have to take a photo with that friend in the next 24 hours. That's really good. It's like breaking all the social anxiety. Yeah, it was like something I wanted during school. All I wanted was like hang out with friends and like make some money on the side. So like both of these products were built for myself. Also, because I only went to school for one year, I was like pretty bored of my classes by the end and I really wanted to do something bigger and like do it full time. So I was like the perfect opportunity to start Martin. What was the process like getting into Yale? Did your past projects play a role or was it mainly just like giving SAT or? I'm not sure if my like hacker projects really played a role. I went to sort of like a competitive school in the Bay Area. So we all like worked pretty hard and we did a lot of like, yeah, just a lot of like academic stuff. You're in Yale and do you find it boring? Do you find it useful? Like why did you decide to drop out? Because most people are dying to get into universities like that. I really enjoyed my one year at Yale, but I feel like by the end, I felt just like a dire need for more adventure. I feel like first semester of college for anyone is like this huge like adventure, but then somehow really quickly it became kind of dull. I could sort of imagine in my next three years in college and what that would feel like. A lot of recruiting and a lot of classes and sort of the same things over and over again. And I wanted something new. And when I came home from college, like last summer, after my freshman year, I was like telling everyone like, oh, I'm going to drop out. I'm going to drop out. I just like need some sort of excuse to drop out. And then uh, when we got funded for the startup, it was sort of a no brainer for me. I want to get into your thought process of coming up with an idea for Martin. Were you like scratching your own itch? Was this something that you were thinking about for a long time? Like, how did you
you decide to do it? Well, I've been a Siri power user for a long time. That's rare, by the way. <laughs> Everyone who I talk to, like, never even use Siri to do, like, half the things that I use it for. Throughout my high school, I think I was, like, really frustrated with how bad it is, but I still used it because I just, like, I love voice as an interface, and I find it really cool. That was sort of, like, the start of the idea, where, like, while well, there's this large language model thing now, this was one year ago, so it's still pretty new, and it seemed like a great opportunity to push the state of the art forward a little bit, and there were a lot of better voice models, like, better text-to-speech and better speech-to-text. So we thought, like, why don't we just, like, chain these things together, like, no one has really done a good job of it, and then integrate it with as many things as possible. We were also frustrated that Siri is, like, really limited in its number of integrations. Like, all it can really do is help you move through your iPhone a little bit faster, but it doesn't have your email, it doesn't have your Google Calendar, it doesn't have, like, the ability to have full conversations with other people, it doesn't have, like, Slack or Trello or Notion, any of these things. And Martin, right now, it's iOS and Android both? We're not on Android yet, but we have, like, for iOS users, we try to give them, like, Google products and Apple products and Microsoft products for the integrations. So, right now, the action items are more like make a phone call or play the podcast or call this person, text that person, set a reminder. The two main categories that we've started in are scheduling and communications. So scheduling is like reminders and then managing your Google Calendar and your Apple Calendar. And then communication ties into that pretty well because the biggest communication use case is have Martin text someone on your behalf and coordinate back and forth with that person. So you can give Martin like a mission and then he'll reach out to this person in your contacts from his own phone number and then he can talk back and forth with that person to like coordinate the thing. And then during that like conversation, he has access to your calendars. That connects really well with our scheduling use case. So those are the two main ones right now. And we're just about to launch phone calling. Actually, we launched like a beta version yesterday, but we're going to push out like having Martin call other people on your behalf very soon. So this is sort of like tying together the last part of our like communications MVP. After this, we're going to work more on email things. So we're going to make Martin like able to coordinate and communicate over email in addition to texting and phone calling. And then soon after that, I think we will eventually get into this like note taking slash like documents, information management like area, which will include like Slack and Google Docs integrations. So what's the business model? Is it like ChatGPT where you pay $20 a month and pretty much this voice assistant is active all the time? We're still pretty early in our like exploration of the business model, but right now we charge $30 a month uh, with like a free trial. Do you believe like in a decade from now, it'll be like, we'll be completely hands-free with just, just talking? Do you think that's going to happen or no? I don't think like visual interfaces are going anywhere. I think audio has been like really poorly done in the past decade. It'll definitely become like a lot better. You know, like the movie Her, like in that movie, like everyone's only using audio. And I find that a little hard to believe because there's some things that it's just so much better if you're like typing, if you're coding, I'd much rather type and like speak my code. So I think that's why we're not just voice. You can text Martin via SMS, via WhatsApp, you can also email Martin. Depending on the scenario, like let's say you got an email with like 10 upcoming like events, 10 like Zoom calls, there's a convention coming up and there are 10 events during the day. Uh, if you get that in an email, you can just forward it to Martin and say, put it, put this all my, on my calendar and remind me five minutes before each event. And he'll like set up 20 events, 20 calendar events and like 20 reminders for you all in one email. If you were to do that with voice, it would take forever. That's amazing. So what's the ultimate like vision with Martin? Like where do you want to go with it? I mean, the dream is basically the same dream that I think Siri and Bixby and like Google Assistant all set out with, which is to make like a personal and a proactive AI assistant. And I think the key to that is like great integrations with everything. Like the assistant needs to be able to use your own productivity apps as good as like a virtual assistant, like a real person. And then it needs to know you as well as a virtual assistant would, like know all your preferences, personal and proactive, and then well integrated. I think if you have these two things, you can make like a dream personal assistant. And then that would just be like Jarvis. There's this general myth that voice assistants are usually listening to you when you're not talking to them. You know, like how people say, oh, Amazon knew what I wanted, what I wanted to buy and now he's recommending to me. Do you think that's a myth? Because you're an engineer, so you probably understand that question much better. Well, some of them like, like Siri has to listen for, hey Siri, so it must be listening at all times. Because if you say, hey Siri, like your phone's off, it'll turn on. So in this case, will we be saying, hey Martin? R right now we, we kept Martin. It doesn't listen when it's off. You have to open the app or you we have shortcut set up. So you can like, we have one shortcut, which is you can double tap the back of your phone and then Martin will turn on. Or there's one where like, you can also hold down the action button. If you have an iPhone 15 and it'll turn on Martin. You can set up a shortcut that's like, hey Siri, get me Martin. And then Martin will show up. So we don't listen unless you activated him with some, some action. That's super cool. Have you read anything that, or watched anything that like was life changing? I think what definitely inspired me was reading a bunch of Paul Graham essays when I was at Yale. Like that's what made me want to apply to YC. I just started reading like his entire blog and like every single essay was so good, especially from back in like 2010. And how did you get into YC? Yeah, we, we did YC last summer. I mean, the YC application is pretty short. I feel like anyone can apply to YC and it's the same process for everyone. You just apply and you have one interview. What's an advice you would give to 20 year old founder in a university right now who wants to start a new startup? I think college is like primarily 
primarily the place where you like go and find your identity in addition to like sort of like people you want to be around. I certainly got more of that out of college than any other like academic thing. It is quite evident to me that when you are in college, you become the average of like your friend group in college. So don't make up your mind too quickly about like who you want to be because you think like something's too hard to achieve. The thing I hear the most frequently from my peers who want to start a startup is they don't think they're ready or they think they need like five or 10 more years to be ready. Everyone has their own like internal clock of when they feel ready and you need to build your confidence and your faith somehow. And for me, the, the best way to build it was to like launch some projects. Like I launched my like campus tours website, my social app, uh, and then I read some hologram essays. And I think that gave me all the confidence that I needed. Everyone go to trymartin.com and try the product and you'll be amazed. Yeah, I think the best way to experience Martin and to experience what we've made is just try it out. I mean, there's like so many things you can do with the product. And I think if you're interested in like activity and like you've always wanted a Jarvis, like I had like growing up, it's a really magical product to try. Yeah, and let me know any feedback. Just let Martin to ping me.